Hello everyone, uh, Dave and Dan here again from GE Inspection Technologies with the next in the series of videos related to the Mentor UT. In this one we're going to run through the basic corrosion uh, demo application. Uh, we used our Mentor Create software to build an app uh, that's very much specialized for the block that's included in the demo plate the basic scan parameters uh, that are used here, and so on. So I've got my scanner on the plate. I'm going to squirt a little water on my plate. I notice that my water is beating up a little bit. Uh, so if you have a little, tiny bit of oil or anything in your plate, sometimes that's an issue. Just one little drop in the middle of dishwashing detergent. Rub that around with your fingers. That'll allow the water to really wet nicely to the plate. You'll get better coupling that way. Just makes everything a lot easier to, to do. So the first thing we're going to do is start our demo app. Uh, in this case, it's called Corrosion Demo Kit. You'll notice on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see what I'm doing uh, around the instrument and the scanner. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see a high-resolution remote view of what's happening on the instrument itself. So you notice I get a pop-up. I have a choice of launching or resuming. In this case, I'm going to launch, meaning I start from the beginning of the app. Resume would allow me to pick up where I left off the last time I closed the app. So I go ahead and say launch and OK. And the first panel of the application is just a welcome panel. Here's what the, the app is all about picture of the equipment we're going to use, some information, version information, and so on. Second panel of the app, think of this as sort of step by step the procedure we're going to follow. So the first thing we're going to do is check the probe for dead elements, then we'll calibrate for the velocity of the steel in the block. We will calibrate the delay, uh, the probe delay for the probe that we're using. We're using a, a um, dual element uh, pitch catch probe for the those of you that are accustomed to conventional thickness gauging it's very much like an array version of our FH2E thickness probe. After the delay calibration we will calibrate a TCG curve time corrected gain curve for the instrument. We'll do an auto 80 calibration on a uh, notch that we have in the plate you know, adjust all of our gains to give us a nice 80% screen height echo from that notch. We'll calibrate the wheels of the scanner. Uh, we'll have a little instructional page with an overview of the inspection we're going to do and then we're going to scan the plate and acquire some information about the plate. Next panel of the app is simply the equipment that we're going to use. Now this, uh, this panel is very interesting because this is the first place that we begin to mix uh, operation of the instrument with instructional material. So you'll notice on the left side of the screen uh, you have an overview of what, uh, what's going on in this test. Um, we're, it's telling us to move our probe to the 5 millimeter step of the block. Okay, so there I'm over the, the 5 millimeter step. Um, it's telling me to I can adjust my gain a little bit. I want to get the, the amplitude line up just a little bit into the threshold band on the display. So what you're seeing on the top of the, of the two displays is a sector scan or an end scan view, an electronic scan view. So you have depth into the part, amplitude is color modulated, and as you go from left to right across the view you're seeing the different elements of the probe. The bottom view is uh, something that we just use in calibration panels, and that's called an amplitude view. And what you're seeing there is the amplitude in gate A for each of the virtual probes. And right now we have a single element wide virtual probe because we're looking for dead elements. The red line that you see on the screen is the maximum amplitude seen for gate A. Green is the instantaneous updating amplitude in gate A. So I'm all set here. I hit calibrate. It says, hey, all my elements are within 6 dB of each other. I don't see any dead elements on the probe. You got a good probe. Next panel, we're going to do a velocity calibration. We're going to do a two-step 
velocity. We're going to look at a 5 millimeter step and a 15 millimeter step. The instrument's telling me put my probe on the 5 millimeter step. I'm already there. You notice I've got a nice echo in gate A. I hit calibrate. It says go to the 15 millimeter step. So I move my trolley to the 15 millimeter step. I'm right in the middle of gate B. And it says my velocity is 5,897 meters per second, right on the button for steel. Yeah, we would expect to see something right around 5,900 meters per second. And there we are. We go to the next panel. You notice I've been moving from panel to panel by pressing the next button down here in the, on the navigation bar. I can always go back if I want. We're going to keep going. In this step, we're doing a probe delay calibration. The instrument is prompting me to move to 15 millimeters. I'm on the 15 millimeter step of the block. I have an echo right in the middle of gate A. There we go. We're done with the probe delay. Move to the next panel. And in this panel, we're going to do a five step TCG calibration. So we start off at two and a half millimeters, thin step of the block. And you notice on the instructional section over here in the lower left, it's highlighted the five steps of the demo block that we're going to use in this test. And graphically, it's explaining to me what we're doing here. So it says press the calibrate button to start. <coughs> Tells me to put my probe on a two and a half millimeter step. Hit cal. You notice it automatically adjusted the gain until the I was getting an 80% echo in the gate on every one of the virtual probes. It recorded that and now it's telling me move to the five millimeter step. You notice my gate's already moved to the five millimeter step and it's waiting for me. Hit Cal. It's done with five. Go to seven and a half. Go to ten. Go to fifteen. And if I had not spent so much time telling you what I was doing there, we would have been done with the five point TCG calibration in about fifteen seconds. So TCG out of the way, we're going to move to the next step. And in this step, out here in the area of the 15 millimeter step, there's a notch that comes up to 11 millimeters. So I'm going to move my probe just a little further out, and there it is. You'll notice the gate's already positioned and waiting for me. So I peek up the probe over that notch at 11 millimeters. I hit calibrate and it takes the peak amplitude for that notch to be 80% screen height. So now I've done everything about calibrating for velocity of the material, probe delay, I've checked the probe for dead elements, I have a TCG curve so that the whole range of thicknesses that I'm looking at here will give me a, a roughly equal amplitude of signal, and I've peaked up the gain for the entire system to give me a nice 80% echo on that milled notch that we have. So we have one more calibration step to do, and that is to calibrate our positional encoders. And to do that, we've marked out an area on the, the Lexan block here. We have an area that, uh, we have two lines scribed on the block that are 207 millimeters, five inches apart, or six inches apart, excuse me. So 200 odd millimeters long. And we know that the distance between that notch, on, if you pull up on the little plunger here, <coughs> on this axis, the trolley locks into notches. So the distance between the extreme notches, we know ahead of time. And the distance along the travel we know as well by the marks that we placed on the plate. So we're going to do a, a three-point calibration here. We're going to put the probe all the way to the left. We're going to go to our back mark and we're going to say start calibration. Now the instrument tells me to move. It's actually 127 millimeters this way. 
move the preset distance 103 and a half I think it is but you just go between the two notches and you hit calibrate again and then to check this system for backlash in the encoders you go back to your original position and the instrument's going to want to see that you're within two millimeters of the original position when you hit this the last time and it says okay I'm happy on this panel we see the a uh, graphical representation of the plate a couple of different ways we see the pattern in which we're going to scan the the graphic up here in the towards top center and you'll see the basic layout of the next panel so if we go ahead and go to the scanning panel there's a lot of good information on this panel So we have a, a basic uh, pictorial representation. It's actually a, a uh, rendering from the CAD program that was used to design a demo plate. That's the, the gray area. Across the top of the screen, we have a number of readouts. Uh, so you have amplitude and gate A. <clears throat> you have the thinnest uh, TSMA, uh, thinnest uh, area seen in the scan. TMA is the thinnest uh, depth reading seen within a single scan, electronic scan across the probe. A percent A is the amplitude and gate A, and TA is the thickness of the selected beam. So at this point, at the bottom of the screen, <clears throat> I have several buttons in the center to deal with scanning and recording. So I can clear, that clears out my C scans, I can hit record, and now I begin to move my probe over the plate. <coughs> and you can see as I move the, <coughs> move the scanner over the plate, my C scans fill in. I hit stop recording. <coughs> and now I can use some simple one finger gestures to select areas of the C scan to look for interesting artifacts. You notice when I draw a box, I've got two C scans here. The one on the left is the overview, shows me the entire scan area. The one on the right is an active C scan or a view that I've selected by drawing a box on my overview C scan. So wherever I place the, the orange box that you see coming up over here in the overview, that's what I see in the, the active scan window. Any one of these data views can be maximized by simply double tapping on some part of the data view. So if I wanted to see the sector scan very large, double tap, it expands to full screen, double tap, it goes back to normal. I can do that with the A scan, the C scan. Now in the active window C scan when I draw a box, First thing it does is centers the crosshairs in the box and then gives me some floating, a little floating window with more information about what it's seeing underneath. So I can see the thinnest reading within the box, the thickest reading, back wall reduction, things like that. In the upper right hand corner of that data view, I can see the amplitude under the crosshair, the thickness under the crosshair, and I can see the X and Y position in millimeters on the block. So with that, we'll end our discussion of the, the basic corrosion demo. Again, this is Dave and Dan for GE Inspection Technologies, and thank you for watching.